Three years have passed since Son Goku and his friends defeated the evil dragons. Far across the universe, unknown visitors head toward Earth. Today we are finally talking about a story that I've been wanting to make a video on for years now, and that is Dragon Ball New Age. Now, if you think that I already reviewed Dragon Ball New Age, guys, I reviewed the original Dragon Ball New Age, which only had a few chapters. I haven't touched the new released version. This is updated with new art, new storylines, a completely new feel. So let's go ahead and jump into it together and see what the story is all about. I love each and every one of you. Thank you guys so much for being here. We begin the story at Mr. Satan's house and Mr. Satan has obviously aged since Dragon Ball Z's Buu Saga. This is obviously after Dragon Ball GT and he is having a bunch of conferences, being the champ of the people. He's still as popular as ever and he's in the middle of an interview. And the person that is giving him the interview is none other than Android 18 and Marin. Now, this is exactly kind of the design what I want for Marin when she gets older. I mean, I would like her to look a little bit more like Android 18 personally, but the fact that she's got like Krillin's eyes, it just makes sense. She's definitely like it has a good, good aspects of a design for a character like this. That's a mixture between Android 18 and Krillin. Now, Android 18, on the other hand, is a complete and utter baddie. Like she looks phenomenal. I'm not sure sure exactly why in Dragon Ball and even in the fan series we always go with having like aged women women that are in their 40s having like short hair like this uh, everybody seems to have it even Chilai has it even though that you know she's not that old but I think it works very well for Android 18 and I like that she is the one giving him the interview because it's like another way for her to squeeze some money out of him essentially in like a completely different way because you know essentially Hercule is like her sugar daddy like unofficial sugar daddy by extortion this story is going to be taking place all around earth all around different cities because everybody is in a completely different spot than they were originally in I mean we have goats in here in East city and he's on a date with somebody that has never been to a movie theater now i don't know if that's because maybe they're too young to go to a movie theater or because this person this girl is from the country and has only seen movies at home as she says not exactly sure what the situation is there but as you can see goten looks like he's kind of wearing a jacket like trunks here there's a lot of emphasis on this girl really not knowing the ins and outs of like just going to the movie theaters that I feel like she's a character that we should know but it's Goten and you would think that Goten being the one that lives out in the country he would be the one not really knowing anything about movie theaters but even she right here is saying like are we like over are we like underdressed and she's like wearing like a really nice shirt Goten's really like dressed up really nice and so he's like nah nah we're fine but it just it's like interesting why there's so much focus on the fact that I'm wondering who this girl actually is I wonder if we're gonna get like an actual name for her but this this Goten design this looks very similar to the original Gohan design I made a video about it a long time ago there was an original Gohan design that uh, Akira Toriyama wanted to make for Gohan when he came back um, after the cell arc and this one looks very much like that actually we go to Satan City where we see Orange Star High School now I I thought that Orange Star High School was an orange city but I could be a hundred percent wrong on that I think that they are right in the fact that this is Satan City but we see some students arguing about whether there's gonna be a quiz or not and this is just a small introduction to get us into a conversation with Pan and see how Pan has grown after Dragon Ball GT. And this is by far one of the best renditions of an adult, or not adult, but teenage Pan. And I think the other one that I would, that I recall is the one from Dragon Ball Deliverance. I think that one's a pretty decent one. This one's more solid, I think, because this not only is a combination between uh, Pan, the Pan that we saw in Dragon Ball GT, she kind of looks a little bit like Chi Chi, to be honest, especially with the hair coming out the sides right next to her ears, but it's the outfit. Now the outfit itself, remember, it's a high, it's a school outfit and she's wearing it the exact same way as Videl did back in Dragon Ball Z. So the design alone alone on Pan is a 10 out of 10. This is an amazing design by uh, Malik Torihe, who is the creator of Dragon Ball New Age. Shout out, I'm gonna leave a link to his Twitter account in the description below in the top comment, but this is just top tier right here. I absolutely love this. And now we get to my man Trunks, who is not sporting the jacket that his future version was. Goten was sporting that. This Trunks seems to be a far more bigger shot in the Capsule Corporation company to the point where he has his own sexy personal <laughs> assistant. But this, this character right here, it looks like such a vast improvement 
over shoving Mai into Trunks' life. This is such a better improvement. I'm not saying that they're like together together, these two characters, but I'm saying like this combination is just a much better combination in my own opinion, that this, this, uh, this secretary or this assistant is actually benefiting from Trunks employing her and Trunks is benefiting from her assistance. At the same time, it makes sense because it's a huge corporation and we never really get into the logistics of it or the real life aspects of having the heir of Capsule Corporation basically, you know, what his duties are. And the fact that his duties are working in the company, it's just a, such a huge step up from having him just wander around, do whatever whatever the hell he wants to be, or become a superhero like Gohan. Oh, and I spoke not too soon, I think. I, I, I spoke in the right, the right way, because it sounds like in this panel right here, it sounds in this part of the story that um, they are a little bit more than than just, you know, yeah, they're just, they're, it's a far more close relationship than just, you know, you're, you're working for me. I mean, she, she, she may be working. And I mean, again, such a better, it's a great design for this character. I love the design. I love her hair. I love the assistant look. I like the fact that, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a little connection there and Trunks is a little bit, you know, trying to pull the trigger on this and tell his mom about their relationship. I'm assuming that that's what, that's what it's hinting at. But she's like, no, 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 we gotta, we gotta wait. Cause remember she is working for him. So this could affect her career if, if Bulma doesn't take it the right way. And we cut to like what everybody else is doing. And it seems like Dende's off doing something. Maybe, you know, he's on new Namek or something, or he's on some sort of quest. I'm sure we're going to find out exactly what he's up to up to this point. And I can't wait to see what his uh, journey is up to this point because he is, he should be an adult by now. But Mr. Popo is not alone because Piccolo is watching the lookout. So Piccolo is there and I mean, he's doing the standard Piccolo stuff, which is meditation or just sleeping. I don't know. And of course, it would not be an introduction to a new Dragon Ball series if we did not see what was going on with Goku's family, specifically Chi Chi, who sadly, I mean, she's singing, it seems like, or humming, but she seems like she's in a good mood and she's thinking, obviously thinking to the sky, thinking about Goku and him leaving and everything like that, but she seems to be in good spirits. It's just kind of sad to me that this is like a real reality of Chi Chi's future where she will be alone essentially on that mountain. She doesn't want to really leave to go anywhere. She doesn't want to relocate. She likes living there. And so she, and she's so far away from everybody else and all her kids are gone. So she's by herself. And then Goku in Dragon Ball Super is off always doing something. Now he's a kid. And then you have, you know, you know, in this he's gone completely. So it is actually really sad to see that this is the state of where Chi Chi's left off. But at the same time, it just makes sense. And if she's fine with it, I mean, we should be too. So for a minute, I saw this image and I thought that we were going to be getting like a look at Goku. And I'm just like, this looks exactly like Goku. Like if you just saw this image right here, you would absolutely 110% believe that this is Goku. But it is not. It is actually Gohan. And Gohan is in the middle of a fight against Vegeta and Oob, a 1v2, except that Oob is not transformed and Vegeta Vegeta is not transformed. It is just Gohan in a Super Saiyan 4 transformation, which makes sense. After Dragon Ball GT, Gohan should be the next in line. Just like Trunks is taking the his role as being the heir to Capsule Corp seriously, Gohan, in my opinion, needs to take the role as Earth's protector seriously. Even though he didn't choose that path, he is built for it. He is 100% chosen for it. But they are tearing up the Supreme Kai's plan to the point where like, the Supreme Kai's are like, yo, this is, a, this is a little bit too much, guys. Like, I invited you here to train, not to destroy and trash the place. Come on, man. But you get these, these godlike beings around each other and fighting it's of course it's gonna end up like this it's gonna end up into like a complete battle royale and everything's gonna be destroyed i'll be completely honest in this panel right here this absolutely looks like goku so this could be goku and i could be wrong remembering this wrong but i thought goku went off with the with the dragon so i'm i thought that this series didn't have goku in it but he's saying can get rusty and he wants to go with a power that is beyond Super Saiyan 4. So he's trying to find something on the next level and something that more than likely will come in useful when it comes to the big bad of this series. So he's just 100% dedicated to find it. And Vegeta's the same way. It's almost like Vegeta was reading his mind. He's like, no, I will, I will find it because you can see in the top, 
that Goku or Gohan, it's hard to tell here, he's the one thinking about this, and which is more likely Goku. And then Vegeta's like, no, I'm going to find it. But then it cuts to Vegeta actually in his gravity chamber saying that him and Goku are equals now. So maybe he's thinking back on them training in the past. Maybe that's what it is actually. So like, again, I read these things along with you guys, the way that I review these, the way that I react to these. So all my reactions are hundred percent fresh, hundred percent valid. And so this is just coming off as he's thinking back on him training with Goku and ooh back on the Supreme Kai's planet. And he's now training. He's thinking about that while he's still training in the gravity chamber and, and, you know, tr and saying that he's the same level of strength. So now he needs to find something above that because if not, Goku's going to find it. He knows Goku will find it. And this is where we get the recollection that it has been three years since the end of Dragon Ball GT. It has been three years of peace. And I am really glad that not everybody has lost their touch or has been like just chilling for the most part. We do get a few people like living their lives or whatever, but it seems like kind of like everyone's kind of on board. Like no, there's no slouches in the Dragon Ball world besides maybe Piccolo. <laughs> now Piccolo is training. He's meditating. That's a form of training. Goku knows that. Vegeta knows that. Now we have a descent from two unknown beings up to this point of the story heading straight for Earth. And we're going to see exactly who these people are. So that is completely my bad because now after reading this page, it is not Gohan who's Super Saiyan 4. But I think that Gohan is, should be the next one. At least he should have been in the last three years. So yeah, Gohan's probably still doing what Gohan does, which is not doing anything. And so it looks like, um, yeah, Vegeta has been in the gravity chamber training ever since Goku came back. Goku was gone and he came back and that's probably where he was training on the Supreme Kai's planet against Goku while Goku was in Super Saiyan 4. And uh, yeah, that is probably what ended up happening. And now he's training because he wants to find something more because Goku is back and he knows that Goku will find that extra thing. And we have, you know, Bola here. She looks exactly the same as she did in Dragon Ball GT, except in Dragon Ball GT, she was like, what, 15 or something like that? Definitely 18 now. And then you have Bulma, who I'll be completely honest, this is the version of Bulma that is not letting the dragon is not asking the dragon to wish for her remaining y y vitality or something or her youth because she looks like she aged like 20 years or something. She looks old. Like she looks way older than Android 18. So unfortunately, this Bulma does not care about what she looks like. I mean, or fortunate. I mean, it doesn't matter, but she's not making those wishes on the dragon to make herself look younger. Definitely not. I like that it seems like Bola has a closer relationship to Vegeta, even like trying to like get, you know, get him to pay attention to her because she she's the one that brought him a drink. And remember in the past, she didn't really care about martial arts or anything like that. So she seems to have taken an interest a little bit in her father and what, the, what her father does. But that's when they feel a rumble. And we already know that's gonna be the two pots coming through the air barreling down toward earth vegeta barely feels it but to an earthling it probably shakes them to their core it probably feels like an earthquake i don't know how vegeta did not hear that because like that is a massive crater those are two massive craters there's no way he didn't hear that like that definitely shook the planet but out of these craters out of these sand pots we get our first character here and it is a young woman and she is tiny like that this is a very small woman she actually looks i mean i already I, again i've done the original one i've reviewed the original one so i know who she is but i'm talking to you guys as if almost like it's my first time seeing her because she is kind of redesigned a little bit because this is the updated version this is the revamped version of this of this story so uh yeah she looks like almost like a mixture between android 18 and gine a little bit like the original Android 18 outfit and then just Gine with a little scar on her face. It's kind of what her outfit and her design looks like. I think she looks fine. And out of the next pod, a much larger foe comes out of it and a much larger presence. And he's asking her if she's picking up anything from her scouter. And this guy is ginormous. I don't know how he fit in the pod himself, but uh, yeah, he's like at least two of these pots on top of each other. That's how tall he is. And this is the original shot that I remember. It is ingrained in my mind from the original Dragon Ball fan manga where we see, uh, you know, these two coming out of their pods, standing next to each other. He's walking toward the camera, looking around. She's explaining that there's a lot of life here and there are huge readings on the planet, like magnificent readings. They both have their tails. Uh, this dude right here is supposed to be Vegeta's brother. If it's still the same story, Vegeta's brother with a design to me that looks unique as hell 
for Dragon Ball. Like, it is not something like, uh, yeah, the hair and the face looks like Vegeta's basically, and he's ginormous with a black tail, but it's the clothing. The clothing, I can't, like, pin it to anything. It doesn't look like a Saiyan's clothing. It doesn't look like a, like a um, Frieza Force clothing. And so it is definitely its own unique thing. It's skin tight, so it probably like expands with him if he gets bigger or he gets smaller, whatever the case is. But uh, I, I don't mind his design. I think it's pretty cool. I think that it's almost like a futuristic looking Saiyan in my opinion. It's apparent here that this guy does not know how to read power levels without the scouter. And they may only have the one scouter. So she's the one that's kind of catching everybody's radar around the planet. She's saying there's huge ones on the planet, way bigger than her power, but the biggest one on the planet is actually nearby. And this big one is actually comparable to his power. It's very, very similar. And so she points him in the right direction. It's in that city that we passed with our pods. So we obviously know that this huge power is going to have to be Vegeta. There's no other person that it could be. I'm just wondering how their interaction is going to be and what's changed from the original story. He wants to go and face off against this this being or at least check them out as fast as possible. I mean, they just got there like two seconds ago and this, the girl's like, no, you should just rest. I mean, it's too, it's dangerous to overexert yourself when you just got out of hypersleep. But he's like, nah, I have rested enough. It's time, it's time to handle business. It's time to stand on business. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And exactly what that business is. Is it different than before? I don't know. Is it changed slightly? Let's see. And so he takes her hand and another great shot. I remember this from the original. It's such a iconic shot of him carrying her off because he's obviously going to fly faster. It seems like they are a couple at least. How that works uh, physically, <laughs> I mean, I'd like to know, but no, I, it, it would be hard because he's like at least three of her if she stood on on top of her. It, it, it's literally Broly and Chi-Li, essentially, is what it is, uh, at least in terms of sizes. So, um, yeah, I, yeah, if they're together, I mean, that's great for them. And what kind of Saiyans they are, or if they're Saiyan survivors from Frieza's attack, and what kind of Saiyan this guy is, I'm curious to find out. So I love these type of panels. These are my favorite parts in either the manga or in the anime. I love this stuff. When, when somebody feels like a massive power level nearby and they start freaking the fuck out, I, this is like what I live for. This is like, oh, 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 you know, when they, and it goes through all their faces or whatever, and they're all like feeling, that's a massive power surge, or that's a massive power reading kind of thing. Like, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. And they are all feeling like Goten, Piccolo, Pan feels it, Giryu is still here. He's in her backpack. He feels it too. Trunks feels it. Like, they all feel this power, and it just shows, it's a good indicator as to what kind of being they're actually dealing with and that's why i like that vegeta also feels his power and his is a little bit more shocked because he thinks that it's kakarot just because of how massive it is he is shaking a little bit but then he's like no that's not kakarot because he actually can sense powers and he knows that this is not kakarot's power this is something completely different a new enemy has shown itself on earth and it is as you can tell how worried he is it's massive so it just comes out of nowhere and he knows that like yeah we need to I need to go handle this because, you know, this is going to get bad. But what makes it worse is that when he's running out of the building, he's like, oh, whoever this is, is, is coming straight for us. Remember, they're coming straight for the biggest power level. So, yeah, as he's saying this, they're already there. That's how fast it was. I love this transition. This is such a, like, this shows how fast and how powerful this guy is, where everybody's, like, freaking out about his power level, but at the same time, like, he gets from point A to point B in less than two panels. So he's already there before Vegeta can even recognize or clock the fact that he's heading toward him. And the guy says it's been a long time. So that means he knows Vegeta. And again, I believe this is Vegeta's brother. And that is where he says Prince Vegeta. And that is the ending of this of this chapter. I'm going to be covering every single chapter of Dragon Ball New Age. I have never covered the entire thing ever on this channel. I know you guys probably may have seen it before somewhere else or maybe remember from when I did it the original Dragon Ball New Age, but I have never done the remastered version and the updated version, so I'm going to be go ahead and do that. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this Dragon Ball fan manga, and let me know what is your favorite Dragon Ball fan manga. I would love to know. Let me know in the comments section below. This is going to be Blackscape signing off. Take care, guys. Subscribe for more content.